What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my build guide for the Confessor class in Elden Ring. Now this is a build that I personally was able to actually clear the game with and I wanted to share it with everyone. That said, the build itself is mostly a melee build that focuses on a lot of mid-range combat using a variety of special attacks attached to our weapons as well as some summons, and there's a bit of a nature-ish theme to the build that happened kind of accidentally, so I went ahead and named it Wildheart. But with no further ado, let's jump into this. Now, with the difficulty of Elden Ring, your mileage for this build may vary just because it's a difficult game and that's the way it goes, but I was able to beat the game with this build. Now, in terms of our class, I personally like to go with the Confessor class purely because it has, in my opinion, the best stat allocation for us at the beginning of the game. However, there are a few other classes that would be just as viable, such as the Vagabond, the Warrior, the Hero, or potentially even the Wretch, which is a blank slate. Now, stat-wise, we're going to focus on Vigor, Endurance, and Strength. We're going to have a little bit of the Mind stat purely to give us more Faith Points, I think they're called, but actually like mana to use our abilities with. But Vigor, Endurance, and Strength are the big ones. Now, how much Endurance you need or want really depends on the armor you plan on wearing. With this particular iteration of the build, I have very heavy armor on, which means we need a lot of endurance. However, you need some endurance anyway, because that's where you get your stamina from to make your attacks. But the exact amount you need does vary a little bit. Now, for our gear, another reason I like to start with the Confessor is that the Confessor starts with very good gear. The Confessor's armor I actually used through the vast majority of the game. I didn't start upgrading it until fairly late in the game when we start defeating a lot of bosses, because after we start beating the late game bosses, their armor becomes available to buy from a vendor in Round Table Hold, which is the game's central hub location. Now specifically, we want Star Scourge Radon's armor. This is incredible stat-wise, however, it is very heavy, which is why we need all that endurance, so we can actually wear it. Now before we get to Radon's, there are quite a few sets that are also pretty good that we can find along the way. But again, primarily these come from beating late game bosses such as Elmer the Briar, I believe his name is, Commander Nial, so on and so forth. But basically the best armor you can possibly get is going to do you, but in game you want to focus on Radon's and the starter Confessor armor is actually pretty good. Now in terms of our weapons, I personally used the Confessor's broadsword throughout the entire game. However, you can replace that weapon with whatever floats your boat. However, we are going to have a second weapon, which is the Ice Rind Hatchet. We want this very specifically because it comes with a special attack called the Frost Stomp that is awesome. But for our base weapon, it can really be whatever you want. I like to just have both because one is going to be a regular weapon and the other, the Ice Rind Hatchet, is a special weapon. And these two weapons require different upgrade materials, which progression-wise throughout the game I found very useful. And with a regular blade, you can use grease on it, lightning, fire damage, etc. that you can add to that blade to help you out situationally, which I also found to be useful. Now the Ice Wind Hatchet and its Frost Stomp are especially useful because the Frost Stomp is ridiculous. This will send out a sort of wave of frost that deals damage in two hits, and it is a lot of damage. But that damage is, as always, based on whatever upgrade you are on with that weapon. So the more you upgrade your Ice Rend Hatchet, the more damage this is going to do, just like all of your special attacks. Now, for whatever your other weapon is, I would recommend the Beast Roar Special Attack. If you are unaware, you can actually change a weapon's special attack if you have the appropriate item to do so. These items are called the Ashes of War, and if you go to the Smith at Round Table Hold, or any Grace Point really, you can pretty freely swap out your Ashes of War onto different weapons, which will change their special attack. So for your regular weapon, I would recommend Beast's Roar. Beast's Roar is a sort of sound wave that you can shoot at enemies, which has a pretty substantial range. And as a primarily melee character, that is incredibly useful. Combine that relatively long range attack with our medium ranged Frost Stomp, and we've got a decent range as a melee character, which is going to help us out a ton. While I would recommend using a shield in the early game, later on I would actually ditch the shield in favor of a talisman. As a confessor, you will start the game with a few incantations. However, as we are not focused on raising our faith stat, we will ultimately kind of fall behind in that regard. However, past about level 100, when we've pretty much got all of the stats we need, you can absolutely start putting points into faith and mind to really set the build off with a lot of incantations which will add to the build very much so. 
However, level 100 is about where you're going to finish the game. So unless you're planning on playing through New Game Plus, etc., you're probably not going to see that until way, way later. However, the reason we don't want to use a shield, nonetheless, is that having a shield tends to override your weapon special attack. And as such, I found it better to just dodge roll out of the way instead. And with these heavier armors and our high endurance stat, we should still have a very fast dodge roll, which is going to allow us to stay mobile and useful. Now beyond that, you should definitely have some sort of summon as the points that we're going to start with in mind as a confessor will give us enough uh, mana, I like to call it, but I think it's faith points, to regularly cast a summon spell or two in combat. So summons can be upgraded just like everything else, so you do want to keep whatever summon you like using up to date. Me personally, I like the wolves. This will summon three wolves in who can distract the enemy, keep it away from you, which will allow you to take advantage of the range of your beast roar or frost stomp, as well as just melee swings, which will make your life considerably easier. And that's really what combat with this build boils down to. Dodge rolling around, obviously, to get out of the way and not get hit, but then using your summons or your ranged attacks to capitalize on the distance between you and the enemy, as ranged attacks in Elden Ring are actually very, very strong. Our Frost Stomp in particular, because this will, again, deal damage in two hits, but the Frost damage accumulates and then does a big burst of Frost damage once we've done enough of it. This applies to even boss enemies. Almost nothing in the game is resistant to that, and you can deal a ton of Frost damage very, very quickly with it, which is integral to how I beat a lot of the in-game bosses, as that move is very, very strong especially on a fully upgraded Ice Rind Hatchet. Now the Ice Rind Hatchet itself you can get near the Glintstone Dragon in Lake Lenuria. You actually have to go near this dragon for the main quest, so you don't actually have to kill the thing, but the Ice Rind Hatchet is right near that dragon. So it is pretty easy to find and relatively early in game, so you can get your hands on it very quickly. So to summarize, we are a fairly heavily armored if you want to be. You can choose to use lighter armors and go a little easier on the endurance if you want. But me personally, I figured I might as well go all in on the heavier armor and use our endurance to have more stamina as well as the ability to move around in said armor. So this will give us great defense and then combined with upgraded weapons and our ranged special attacks, we ton of damage at range, which makes us a very useful combatant later in the game. But there you guys go my build guide for Elden Ring with the Confessor class. Overall, I thought it was a lot of fun. Again, I did manage to beat the game with it, so I thought it must at least be decent. But by all means, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I certainly hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing, maybe even joining the channel as a member. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.